Hi guys, welcome back. This is Alex with Drunk and Disorderly. And I just wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about how I got started as a reseller. So if you like reseller related content, please stick around. So I started reselling around the time my daughter was about one or one and a half and she's eight now. So that was about seven, about seven years ago. So um, I just remember we used to live in Mexico um, for like five or six years. We moved back from Mexico back here and uh, we were living with my mom and my sister trying to get back up on our feet for about a year, a year and a half. Then from there, we got our first apartment here. And I had my, I already had my son, he was about three or four at the time. And um, so we moved to the apartment. My husband was the only one who was working. And we were trying to come up with ways I could make some extra money while staying at home because mm -hmm. I didn't want to go back to work after having my daughter because it was just going to be way too expensive for daycare for two or actually i think my son might have been around kindergarten that time so um either daycare for one or daycare for two depending on the hours so we didn't want to have to pay that because all of that money would have gone to daycare expenses for them so we were trying to come up ways with working at home and at that time um that was obviously way before COVID and the pandemic. So work from home jobs, at least where I was looking, wasn't that popular. So I was having a really hard time trying to find something that was flexible. I didn't want to sell insurance. That was one option. Um, and I didn't want to sell, um, what was the other option? Selling insurance. And I didn't want to do like a call center because I would have had to be in front of the computer um, you know, like a uh, whole shift, like eight hour shift, or if I was doing part time, like four to six hours. And I still had two kids at home that I had to take care of. So that wasn't going to work out. So I came across a job on Craigslist. I know sketchy, but um, it was actually pretty legit, I guess. So the first job I came across was it was just commission, which wasn't any better. But um, the guy that I worked for, he was selling insurance and I would have to book the um, appointments for him to go to each place to sell the people insurance. So I got paid on the bookings, I guess, so to speak. That lasted for a few months. I made a few, I, f I made some money here and there, which actually did help considering we had no extra money coming in. Then I came across another job on Craigslist. It was in the trucking industry and that one lasted let me think. I want to say that one lasted anywhere from six months to a year. I can't remember, but it lasted for um, a while, I guess. Not a huge amount of time, but enough time to keep steady income coming in. It wasn't a whole lot. It was like a part, like a part time job, I guess. So um, and I think it was maybe around that time. And then I had another job similar to that, that I stayed at that company um, for about two years. And um, around that time when I had the trucking job or the trucking industry job, I came across like some YouTube videos. We didn't have, uh, maybe, I think when we first moved in the apartment, we didn't have a TV, we didn't have anything actually. So we just had our phone. So I was watching YouTube. And then um, once we got the TV, we started watching YouTube on the TV like everyone else, right? So um, <clears throat> I came, so um, I came across I can't remember whose video it was, but I want to say it was Nicole State um, at State's Place. I think I came across her video, um, one of her videos about her making six figures at the time reselling. I think she just at the time resold on eBay and, and at that time Poshmark was just getting started. I think it was like 2014 when Poshmark started if I can remember correctly but it was around that time that Poshmark had just started I saw her video and I saw um and I was just like oh my gosh telling my husband I was like oh my gosh I can make money reselling but the problem was that obviously in the video she was talking about um, buying things at the thrift store and flipping them for a profit 
and at that time I didn't have a huge amount of income coming in to go and spend a whole lot of money at the thrift store and my husband was just like no it's not gonna work how can you um, find stuff at the thrift store and flip it for a profit and I was just like yeah look she's doing it and with watching YouTube videos you have to take everyone's videos with a grain of salt because everyone on YouTube can tell you anyone on YouTube can tell you anything that they're making six figures a year that they're doing all this business but in reality they're not making a whole lot of money so um, you know everyone always wants to push all these big numbers in there and try and reel you into their videos right I'm not saying that she did that or that any of them did that but um, when I was watching her I was just like wow that could be a possibility so I started like mostly everyone with the things around my house i had a few um, like diaper bags that i didn't use anymore so i was going to resell those so and then i think a neighbor ended up bringing me all this baby gear um because i had just had my daughter at the time all this baby gear and i was just like and my husband was just like uh i don't think we need that but we took it anyway just to be you know uh, respectful of it because since she brought it all it was all used stuff it wasn't anything new so um I started with that like uh, the baby carriers I sold a couple of those um, but at that time I think I was selling them at like once upon a child so I took them to once upon a child I got some money resold some of my daughter's things that she didn't get a chance using got some money like that and then started going to the thrift store <laughs> watching these videos states place um, I watched um, Later, eventually, later on down the road, I watched Smoggy Beth, I watched uh, Lori Tata, um, I watched Jack and Ryan. Um, I'm trying to think, I watched, I think it's called Thrift, uh, Thrift State or Thrift Place or Thrift something. It was a guy and he mainly did a lot of reselling on Amazon and I just wasn't ready for that at the time. So anyway, so I, I saw her video and I was just like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, my husband was just like, no, I don't think so. It's not gonna be a good idea. So after I started posting a few things, I think I started on Poshmark because it had just started and I was, I don't remember, I'm trying to think, okay. I think I might have started on both of them, on eBay and Poshmark. And I made so many mistakes with eBay because of shipping and everything, right? It was just so difficult at the time. So I don't, if you're going to get into this business, do not start with eBay. I don't recommend it um, because that one is a lot more difficult than Poshmark and Macari and some of the other um, reselling platforms out there so I started on eBay I was seeing a few sales here and there you know nothing huge but I was still getting excited selling the stuff selling my stuff and then I started later after that someone was talking about Poshmark maybe it was Nicole State I can't remember so I was like okay let me start on Poshmark and then I was just like no <laughs> this platform is not for me it was just too much um like I was posting the stuff the clothing that I had and the clothing, a few pieces that I would find at the store, the thrift store. And I was posting it and, and I was just like, oh, this is too tedious, sharing all of this, staying active like this on here. I And it wasn't like eBay where it was just like, you're listed and you're done, right? So I was just like, I don't think this platform was for me. And plus I wasn't selling anything. And I was just, at that time I was just like, I, how can I sell clothing if there's thousands and millions of other people selling clothing? I was just like, no, there's no way I'm going to be making, being able to make a living or part-time income selling clothing. I was just like, no, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be selling clothing. So I, then after that, I started looking for handbags, toys and shoes. Um, I don't think I sold any hard goods at the time because I was just like not wanting to deal with like anything that was breakable I stopped Poshmark I still had my Poshmark open uh, but I kind of just stopped it all together um, and then yeah so after that my eBay started getting momentum because usually whenever you first start people like whenever you first start you don't have any reviews you're new you don't have any sales so people are more hesitant to purchase from newer sellers so I was like okay 
after a few sales here and there i was buying stuff leaving reviews so people can leave me a review as a buyer so you know long story long <laughs> i finally worked up my ebay store and um i finally worked my ebay store up and got reviews and then something happened where I sold or I had posted a counterfeit coach purse like a vintage one and I didn't know at the time that it was counterfeit and I think they had completely shut my store down and this was like six months or eight months or something after I had started and I was just like oh all this you know extra money that I'm making like now I can't make it my store is closed what do I do so I think at that time after Poshmark had already been on like been um people have been joining a lot it had almost been uh started for like a full year and there was like people doing youtubes about it so i was like okay i'll move to poshmark started getting momentum there i started following so many people follow 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 so people can follow me because i kept hearing you know the more followers you have the more chances are that um you can sell stuff which i don't completely agree with that because i follow a lot of people but very rarely do i look at the feed when people are posting when they're posting new items or when they're sharing items like i don't typically shop like that on poshmark occasionally when i post an item and i see someone else post something then i'll click on it but normally when i shop on poshmark i type in the search bar and look for exactly what i'm looking for or like um you know vintage coach purses a green vintage coach purse something like that so i don't necessarily think the more followers you have the better chances of sales that you have just because i was at that time i was selling consistently and i felt like and i i don't even know i don't even think i was in the thousands of followers maybe maybe a thousand and i was still selling consistently so i don't really feel like the follower thing is that big of an issue once you first start uh, and so my ebay store never reopened i don't know i think it had been like a week or something so i created a new ebay store and that's the one that i've been having ever since the other one closed then after that they finally reopened it i guess i was like in uh, ebay jail or something for like a week so then i i never went back to that one because i built up the other one finally and i think i have like over i don't know how many followers i have or if i even have any followers on ebay i don't even pay attention to that but i have um like over 400 sales on ebay since i started and i have like if anyone wants to know i have like 43,000 followers on poshmark and i think i have like 2,000 items listed combined with sold i know that doesn't sound like a lot but i do cross post to a lot of platforms so um I'm not just selling on Poshmark, but yeah, so now I've been, you know, now I have followers just like on Macari. I think I have like 60 followers on there, but Macari is very hit or miss for me. Sometimes things sell, sometimes they don't. I don't understand their algorithm. I don't know what's going on with that, but I still cross list because I still do make sales occasionally, just like on Depop. Depop and Macari are very similar. I get um, a lot of likes here and there, but it's not consistent like eBay or Poshmark. Um, so yeah, that's how I started in the beginning. And I've watched so many um, YouTube resellers talk about their journey and I always wanted to get full time. And, and during the pandemic is when I started well, my regular job, because I still worked from home. Um, I worked from home, I started a different job in the trucking industry, and I've been having that job for like two to three years now. There's highs and lows in trucking, it's just commission only, or commission? Yeah, it's just commission only, but I still like it, and it was consistent up until right now, which is like, <laughs> you know, I think there's a lot of issues with jobs now, but anyway. Um, so up until the pandemic or when the COVID was uh, just starting like around the beginning, I think it was like March 2020, right? Is when everything started shutting down or, 
you know, people started taking more precautions here, at least in the United States. Um, at that time, I was like, my regular job was just like dead because no one was shipping anything, no one was leaving their house. Well, I guess people were still shipping stuff, but uh, like for the trucking industry. So at that time, I started reaching out like on um, Nextdoor app, trying to see if anyone had any donations that they wanted to give me because of the the thrift stores weren't open so people were not able to go donate all of their old stuff so I wrote like some type of ad saying I'm a small business owner I resell items for a living um, I can come pick your unwanted clothing up and um, so I put an ad out there saying you know something along those lines and I was really nervous at first because I was just like, uh, I don't know how this is going to go. I heard other resellers doing it on Facebook and I think like on YouTube, Lori Tata was talking, she did something similar. But, um, so I was like, uh, what do I have to lose? I'll just do it. But I was thinking that people are gonna be like, oh, I wanted to go to someone in need and <laughs> something, right? I was just nervous. But anyway, I ended up getting a lot of responses. I went to go pick up a lot of stuff and it was all free, they were donating, but I had to weed through a ton of trash, like literal trash, guys. <laughs> like some lady, she ended up putting like, I don't know, like leaves and actual trash in the bags. And I was just like really disgusted and it was wet. And so I was just like, I am not even gonna look through this. I'm just going to throw it away. Like, why do people do that? Why do people <laughs> take advantage of other people and do that? I don't know. But, um, and I ended up getting a lot of really good stuff too. So at that time, I built up my closet um, on Poshmark at least, because Poshmark, ended up taking over eBay and I ended up making way more money on Poshmark and way more sales on there. So I ended up getting, having like between 800 or 900 listings on there just from all of these donations. It wasn't, it wasn't anything super high end. It was just basic mall brands, American Eagle, um, Torrid, um, things like that. So I was just posting it, you know, um, between 10 and $20, $25 if it was good. And I was just sharing it, manual, sh manual sharing it. I think I ended up hiring a, um, an assistant or something to share for me because it was just too much and I wasn't able to share all the time, take pictures, list it. It was just so much inventory. But at that time, I started making more than I had ever had. Um, and I'm not like a huge reseller. I'm not making six figures or anything. At, up until this point, I just started doing it for extra income, to su supplement my income, basically. But um, recently, I just started trying to well and around that time during the during covid i tried to make it more of a full-time income just because i wasn't getting anything for my regular job and now it's slowed down a lot too so i'm trying to build my closet back up i don't know if i want 800 listings again if i can get that much inventory great but if i can't then that's fine um so at that time during covid i was making like way more um, than I had ever had and I was getting maybe like two thousand dollars profit each month like that's after fees That's after cost of goods if there were any fees uh, For cost of goods just because I was getting a lot of donations, but also once the thrift stores opened I went back and started purchasing, you know, so um, Yeah, so that's how <laughs> That's how it all started. That's leading up until now and now I'm trying to get back into the flow of things and become full time and I want to one day hopefully one day soon <laughs> have this job or have this re, uh, reselling become like a full time job I don't know if I will ever be able to like quit an actual job and depend on depend solely on reselling just because the thought of that is kind of scary but also if I have this other you know my regular job and it's still bringing in a good chunk of money why not do it because I'm still at home anyway so um, right now <laughs> I'm not 
uh, making um, you know a huge amount of money um, now so I want to get my closets or my stores back up to at least you know I want to be able to you know take home 2000 after everything that would be ideally nice but uh, it's just been really slow across all platforms so um, you know with Black Friday and Thanksgiving and everything I think there was just like way too many way too many discounts right so um, I am trying to get back up there and uh, I just wanted to take y'all along this journey if y'all wanted to start your own reselling journey to supplement your income or if you want or if you enjoy thrifting um, you know anything so you can <laughs> go along this journey with me and um, I opened up an Etsy shop and I opened up the two antique booths so those uh, those things are also new to me um, so hopefully with those things added I can make more money I still need to work on my antique booth because I'm not completely um, like I'm making the rent and just a tiny little bit of profit but I want to be I have a goal in mind and I want to actually make double the rent so I can make my rent and plus double that so I can take away take home you know a good chunk of money at least in the beginning until I figure out you know what sells how to style it and this and that just because uh, it's been a really <laughs> hard time learning the ins and outs of that okay so the I had to go pick up my son from school real quick and the light is slowly going down but anyway so I hope you all enjoyed this video of how I got started and my journey from before until now and I hope you all follow along hit the subscribe button down below give me a thumbs up guys and I really appreciate it I guess I'll see you all in the next video bye